everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to film a video today about big books and if you're not new to my channel you might know that I love big books. I'm drawn to them because I love diving into a story and get to be with the characters and in this world for a long amount of time. That's my thing. If you put two books in front of me and one of the books is a very small book and the other one is a big book, I'm most probably going to go for the big book. Obviously it will depend on the author and the title and the content, but I just am drawn and inspired by big books. So I thought that I would do a video today about some of my favorite books of over 500 plus pages. Of over 500 pages. And before I show you the books that I have chosen out, because I do have eight books here on my shelves that I would like to show you, which are my favorite big books. I just need to mention that obviously it's not every big book that is amazing and to me personally a big book is only good if it manages to create a story that is interesting throughout all of the pages. It cannot fade out and it cannot lose its pace during the middle of the book. That's not for me. So a big book is not necessarily a good book in my eyes, obviously. I just thought I needed to mention that. And by the way, the thing that got me started on wanting to do this video is because I have recently read some pretty big books which weren't that great. They lost their pacing, they kept dealing with the same thing over and over again and I had a hard time getting through them so I would not recommend starting any of those books which I'm not going to talk about those books but I'm going to show you which books you could start out with if you're interested to dive into a larger and more developed world. The first one comes in at 521 pages and that is Villette by Charlotte Bronte, a book about a woman who becomes a teacher and her development in that school and her development in life in general. A very beautiful book that keeps its pacing really really well and it also comes with its twist which is always a very good thing in pretty large books. And the other one is obviously the most famous one by her and that is Jane Eyre which is my favorite book of all times. This book is amazing no matter how many times I read it and this one comes in at 586 pages. If you are more into fantasy and books that have been written recently then I do have this series of mine which I keep talking about but of course I'm going to talk about it to again today and that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss as well as The Wise Man's Fear by the same author. Now you would think that these books are approximately the same size but no. The first book comes in at 662 pages whereas the second book comes in at 994 pages so that's a good 300 pages more than the first book, but I'm not complaining. The bigger the better, especially if the story is as good as this one is. As I said, it's one of my, I don't know if I said it, but it is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. And I can't wait to get my hands on the third book in this series. Let's go for another classic, which I actually read recently, and that is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, which comes in at 766 pages. This is my favorite book by Elizabeth Gaskell. I prefer to North and South, even though I know a lot of people love North and South. This one was better, in my opinion. Another book about a protagonist who grows up and learns to deal with love and friendship and a father who is a widow but who finds a new wife. This wife has a daughter, so it kind of plays on the theme of Cinderella as well, I think. But basically a really good book. On this list I also had to include The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons, which comes in at 637 pages. I adore this series. I have so far only read the first two books in the trilogy, but I do plan on reading the third book, which is a lot bigger, during the summer, hopefully. If everything goes according to my desires, I will do just that. This one takes place in Russia during the Second World War, and it is a love story, and that's all you need to know. It is brilliant, and my heart aches for these characters. Now I'll get to some pretty heavy hardbacks. I do tend to like to read paperbacks whenever I read a large book just because it's more convenient or I read them on my Kindle as well. But these are hardbacks and they are pretty heavy. The first one is a John Irving book, Avenue of Mysteries. This is the Danish title in case you were wondering. And 
And this book comes in at 579 pages. And yes, I did prepare and write down <laughs> all the page counts in the books. Not in the books, but on the post-it. I'm prepared. This one is pretty, pretty absurd and quirky, but so brilliant as well. It deals with a man who has grown up and thinks back on his childhood with his sister, where they lived in Mexico and they were raised on in a dumpster, in a dump. Which sounds pretty horrifying, but he actually cherishes these memories very, very much. We also follow him in his current life as he goes to India in order to fulfill a promise that he did some years ago. As I said, a very hilarious, however quirky book. John Irving does tend to write big books and I have said before that he is not for everyone because you might have ambivalent feelings as to the content. It's not always action-packed, but in my opinion it's good just because he keeps it fresh and interesting because of the characters. He writes amazing characters and I just really like his books. The very last book I would like to include on my list is The Goldfinch by Donna Tart, which comes in at 771 pages. I adore this book as well. This one is about Theo who suddenly loses his mother in a terrorist act in New York and then he is left alone and we then follow him as he grows to become a man, a young man and how he tries to continue his life even though he has experienced the loss of his only relative, basically. This one is pure perfection. Donna Tart writes beautifully crafted books. If you have read her books, you know what I'm talking about. Every sentence is perfection and you can sense it when reading that she spends pretty much 10 years writing her novels, which I, I get why. It takes time to write these kinds of stories. And that is it for this video and my big book recommendations. If you have any more recommendations, please let me know in the comments because I'm sure there are more amazing big books out there that I need to get my hands on. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will be back again soon with another video. Happy reading!